Since House of the Dragon's premiere last August, HBO has seen a dramatic increase in its viewership, and rightfully so. The highly anticipated prequel made us forget how bad Game of Thrones Season 8 was. Speaking of Game of Thrones, did you know that before House of the Dragon, the hit series had another prequel? For today's episode, we'll be sharing with you what we know about the cancelled Game of Thrones prequel, so make sure you keep watching to find out more. For those of you who missed it, we almost didn't get House of the Dragon since HBO had an entirely different prequel in the works. So what was this prequel all about? In 2019, HBO filmed a $30 million pilot for a show they were calling Blood Moon, with Naomi Watts and Jamie Campbell Bauer in the lead. The project was ultimately abandoned, and according to rumors, not even Game of Thrones author George R. R. Martin had a chance to view the pilot. As we all know, Martin is renowned for his work on The Song of Ice and Fire, which is the basis for the television series Game of Thrones. However, based on what little we do know, it seems great. Unlike the meager 200 years between House of the Dragon and Game of Thrones, Blood Moon was supposed to be set thousands of years before the events of Game of Thrones and cover a variety of subjects. The official summary is as follows. The series chronicles the world's descent from the golden age of heroes into its darkest hour. And only one thing is for sure, from the horrifying secrets of Westeros history to the origin of the White Walkers, the mysteries of the East, to the Starks of legend, it's not the story we think we know. If you've already forgotten, the White Walkers were the main antagonists of Game of Thrones last season, up until you know who went insane. When the first men first arrived in Westeros, the Children of the Forest produced a group of creatures that resemble zombies. Although this aspect of the Song of Ice and Fire mythology was mentioned in Game of Thrones, not much detail was provided, so it makes sense that a series like this would have been fantastic. George R. R. Martin has produced a rich seam of source material that showrunners can mine for years, similar to J.R.R. Tolkien and the Silmarillion. Not only would Blood Moon have explored a subject we know so little about, but it would also have done it from a very different perspective, that of a woman. House of the Dragon is still a show written and created by men, despite the outstanding work being done by actors like Millie Alcock in focusing on the female experience. The showrunner for Blood Moon was supposed to be Jane Goldman, who is also the screenwriter for the next Little Mermaid movie. Additionally, she hoped to have a full writing staff. In contrast to Game of Thrones, which was essentially authored by two men. Martin was meant to be largely absent from the show, acting simply as an advisor and letting the authors come up with their own original plot. It didn't take long before news of Blood Moon getting cancelled spread like wildfire, so eventually the Game of Thrones executive finally explained why the prequel got cancelled. Why waste the money that was spent filming the show's pilot, which reportedly cost between 30 million and 35 million, 29 million pounds. Despite having a huge budget, HBO cancelled Blood Moon in 2019 before it could air. Along with the announcement came the introduction of a brand new spin-off, House of the Dragon, which will debut on August 21st. HBO Chief Content Officer Casey Bloys addressed the show's cancellation in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, claiming that Blood Moon required a lot more innovation and that the project was at greater risk, with a higher return. There wasn't anything glaringly wrong with it, Bloys said. Development and pilots are hard. The former head of HBO's parent firm, Warner Media, Robert Greenblatt, remarked that Blood Moon was not only enjoyable, but also extremely well produced and had a stunning visual quality. What he did say though is that it didn't take him to the same place as the original series. It didn't have the depth and richness that the original series pilot did. In addition, there are three further live action shows and an animated series in the pipeline, along with numerous other Game of Thrones spin-offs. So keep watching to know more about these series. First, we have the untitled Jon Snow series. The unsatisfactory outcome of Kit Harington's Jon Snow was one of the main complaints in Game of Thrones Season 8. Even though he is actually a Targaryen and the legitimate heir to the Iron Throne, Jon leaves Bran Stark, Isaac Hempstead Wright, in charge by returning to the North at the end of the season. But a new show that picks up after Game of Thrones intends to offer Jon a more heartfelt send-off. In a spin-off with no present title, Harrington is expected to reprise his role. Martin disclosed that Harrington came up with the idea for the series on his own. Even though the show is still in the production phase, HBO will likely prioritize working on this project. Project. Next, we have Sea Snake. Steve Toussaint's Lord Corliss Valerian, the most intriguing member of the King's Council, was one of the outstanding characters in the House of the Dragon pilot, Valerian, who is also referred to as the Sea Snake, gained notoriety as a naval warrior via his terrible exploits. 
Lions. The Sea Snake's earlier globetrotting days will be reportedly the focus of a prequel HBO series to House of the Dragon. Bruno Heller, the creator of The Mentalist, wrote the pilot script for The Sea Snake, which is still in the writing process, but we'll delve more into that later. Before presenting The Sea Snake, Heller also approached HBO about a prequel series centered on Robert Baranthians, Mark Addy, and Ned Stark's Sean Bean, Revolt Against the Mad King, which happened before Game of Thrones, but we'll get more into that later. Moving on to the next ship, we have 10,000 Ships. The spin-off 10,000 Ships is a different prequel series in development concerning the exploits in Westerosi waters. According to reports, the show would center on Princess Nymeria, the founder of Dorne, from whom Arya Stark, Maisie Williams, derives the name for her direwolf. It will take place 1,000 years before the events of Game of Thrones. The project has been assigned to Amanda Siegel, a writer for Person of Interest. The nine voyages were renamed the Sea Snake to avoid having too many titles with numbers. 10,000 Ships must be one of the important shows HBO is emphasizing. Next, we have a tale of Dunk and Egg. According to many sources, HBO is reportedly going all in on its return to Westeros and is considering a whole slate of Game of Thrones prequels to go along with its already announced House of the Dragon, The Tales of Dunk and Egg. Based on a collection of novellas by the author of A Song of Ice and Fire, George R. R. Martin, is the title that, according to Variety, appears to be gaining the greatest support. In Dunk and Egg, a knight named Sir Duncan the Tall and a royal in waiting named Aegon V. Targaryen are followed as they go about their daily lives. They are charming fairy tales that would really fit well with the buddy adventure plots that Game of Thrones fans come to love, such as Arya Stark and the Hound or Brienne of Tarth and Podrick Payne. It's intriguing, though, that Martin stated his opposition to a Dunk and Egg show in 2017. The only other potential project that was given any details was a prequel set during Robert's Rebellion, the conflict in which Robert Baratheon worked with Eddard Stark to force the Mad King, Aerys Targaryen, from the Iron Throne. Bruno Heller, who not only created Rome at HBO, but also has expertise with major IP prequels, thanks to Fox's Gotham, was also mentioned by EU as a creator meeting with the network. Beyond those specific it largely appears that HBO is attempting to create a recognizable slate akin to what Disney Plus has done with its small screen Star Wars and MCU shows. Moving on, we have The Golden Empire and an untitled animated series. According to reports, HBO wants to include animation in the world of Game of Thrones. Martin said that one of the two animated episodes now in production will be centered on the Yi T dynasty of Essos. The region of the Game of Thrones map that serves as a loose allegory for Imperial China would be the focus of The Golden Empire. Martin has only mentioned that the show is being written by a young writer, but the early artwork is amazing. And last but not least, there's the untitled Flea Bottom series. There is more to King's Landing's shantytown than simply filth and evil. Characters like Sir Davos Seaworth, Liam Cunningham, were raised in these underprivileged areas. Unfortunately, there won't be any spin-off series following the ongoing exploits of the denizens of Flea Bottom. The development of a live-action show featuring Flea Bottom and its heroes has ceased. And that wraps up today's video about the cancelled Game of Thrones series as well as other spin-offs under development. Which among these titles are you most excited to see? Let us know in the comment section below. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these. We'll see you next time and thanks for watching.